This is Rain Leary from Clark Dental. It's a very short video to show vets how to use the Schick CDR software. So first thing you do is open up your Schick software. So here it is down here. So just open the software. Now you're only really going to use these two things, either create new exam or open exam. So think of that like patient, create new patient or open patient. So if you wanted to see a patient um, that you've seen before, just click on open exam type in their last name or first name, search for them, and you will find them. So I'll just put in vet for now. So you get the idea, last name, vet, yeah. So that would find all my vets, for example. And then I'll just open it. So if that was Smith or Jones, same thing would apply. Okay, so I'll just close back to where we were. So instead of doing that, if I've got a new uh, patient coming in, then I click on create new exam. So think of that, create new patient. And I need to put something in the last name field, something in the first name field, and something in the patient ID. Now, the next thing I do is I check what series I want to use. So, for example, you might want canine extra large. If you've got a large dog and you're not quite sure which images you want to take where, you might want to choose that one. Or if it's, for example, a cat, I normally use feline large. So whichever you want to choose, just choose your right series here. So that's just a, a selection of vertical and horizontal boxes in the right places. So if I now click on OK, I have a flashing red box here because I don't have a sensor attached. But if you had a sensor attached now, you'd see a flashing green box there. Now, if you notice, these boxes are numbered sequentially. One, two, three, all the way up to how many is it? I think it's 13 by the look of it. So it's expecting me to put the sensor in the animal's mouth, fire my uh, x-ray source at it, and my image will appear in this box here. Uh, I don't have to do that, of course. I can override it just by double clicking. I'm just double clicking with my mouse in a different box here. But assuming that I did want to do this one, so this would be, do you see it's telling me, the gold area tells me this is the upper anterior, because it's maxillary anterior region. And it would put the image in there for me, and then box two would be flashing. And then if I fired again, the image would capture into box two, and then box three would be flashing. Do you see? So with a cat, that's what I normally do. We normally start with the cat in um, sternal recumbency and do the right canine. Then, the, then it would automatically jump to the incisors and the left canine. And then we would do the upper right maxillary. And I would always choose this box here, so 10 rather than 11 because the image will capture in 10 but if I haven't quite got the angle right then box 11 will be flashing for me and without me going back to the PC I will have two images from the right maxillary area. Uh, likewise when I go over to the left maxillary I will click on 6 rather than 7 for the same reason and then when I do the lower ones right mandibular and left mandibular that gives me the opportunity if I want to to do one uh, further forward than the other. So one to get the premolars and one to get the molars, for example. And obviously the lower lower incisors in the same way. Um, so up here, where it says new exam, this would get me back to this window here. So if it's this patient here, Oscar Leary, um, I could choose, if it's another day, I could choose another series. So let's just pretend he's a dog now. Canine, extra large. Okay. Now you notice down here, my first images would be there, my second images would be there, and it would have the right date here for that series. Now often for dogs, you just need lots of empty boxes because you're not quite sure. Just say you, you suspect an abscess and you're not quite sure where it is. You just need lots of boxes in the right quadrant, really. So that's what all this is for. You just use whichever boxes you need. Obviously, it doesn't matter how many you leave um, empty. That doesn't matter at all. Um, and uh, yeah, so you just take as many images as you want to and then they'll automatically save. So as soon as you can see the images on screen, they're saved. OK, so that's how you take the images. And as long as you remember to click the right box before you start. So this is dental right and dental left. So in other words, the left of the screen is right and the right of the screen is left. It's as if the animal's looking out at you. As long as you remember to click the right box first, then the image will always be in the right orientation, the right way around. It won't be upside down. It won't be back to front. 
Um, if you forget to do that, I'll show you how to correct that in a minute. OK, so that's how you set up for a new for a new um, series of x-rays. Uh, let me just go back to um, here. Now, if I just go back to some images just so I can show you some actual images and how you then work with them. This is my demonstration series, so you see I've got an awful lot of uh, images down here. Um, so just say it was this one. So just say I've, se I've seen a cat and I've taken a number of images here. Um, so this was right canine in sizes, left canine. So that would be in box one, two, three. It would have bounced along like that. Then I would have done the maxillary in each in each case, um, so the maxillary molars in each case. And then I would have turned the cat over into dorsal recumbency and I would have uh, put the sensor in so canine to canine uh, and taken that shot there. Um, and by the way, this shot here is taken at about 70 degrees to the sensor. Um, and then I would go slightly round the corner and actually point it at the premolar there to take that view. And leaving the sensor where it is, just go around the other corner and fire at that premolar to get that view. OK, so the sensor hasn't moved. The sensor is still in its, it's been put in the cat's mouth portrait rather than landscape over the canine to canine area. Doesn't matter if the tongue is between the sensor and the tooth, by the way, that's fine. So you take this image and then you just literally move your x-ray source around so that it's pointing at the premolar to take these two views here. And then you either move the sensor further back in the mouth to get these views here, or you would take the sensor out, place it horizontally in the cat's mouth and fire straight on at it. So this one is at a bisecting angle, and this one is just firing straight on at the sensor. We have some other videos on positioning, so if you if you want those, um, let us know. So on the upper, this image, well this is this image here for the incisors is taken about 45 degrees to the sensor, and then what you do is you just go slightly around the corner as if you're pointing slightly back to the nose and go slightly higher up to get the uh, canine on both sides. Uh, and then you move the sensor slightly further back in the mouth and slightly over to the side and then you're firing pretty much through the eye at about 45-50 degrees to get these kind of images. Okay so just say you've taken all these images now you want to review them so the way you do that is you just um, open up the image that you're interested in by double clicking on it. When you actually fire your x-ray source at your sensor, it will actually arrive on screen like this about two or three seconds after you've fired your trigger. So nice and quick. So just to take you over what you're seeing here, this is obviously your zoomed image of your uh, radiograph. You've got a sort of preview of your series here. This here tells you whether or not you exposed the image correctly. Obviously, after the event, you, you know, you've taken the image, but it just gives you an indication of if, if this needle was consistently over here, I'd be having very wishy-washy images and they'd all be underexposed. If the needle was over here, my images would be overexposed and very dark looking. So the, the goal is to try and get the needle as close to zero as you can to get a properly exposed image. OK, so this image here, um, see this little blue thing here under the image? If I just left mouse click and move that over to the right, do you see the image sharpening up and softening? So sharper one way, softer the other. That's how that goes. Uh, it's just a quick way of sharpening the image. You have some other image enhancement options up here. So by default, you're already on zoom. You see my cursor is just a normal cursor here, but when I move it onto the image here, it becomes a magnifying glass. So if I double click my left mouse button, it will zoom in. Um, and you see this little red box here, I can now drag that around if I want to zoom around and have a good look at everything I can do. And when I'm ready to zoom out again, I just reposition my cursor over here and double click again, left mouse button, in that goes, okay. Um, the next one, long contrast. This is one of those kind of um, uh, dynamic contrast and brightness. So if I press my life, left mouse button down and move up and down, I'm adjusting the brightness and here I'm adjusting the contrast. Look over here as I move up and down and left and right. So you see what it's doing. It's, it's sort of adjusting those for me. But I personally find it easier to do from here than from here, because this way you can kind of move around wherever you like and just get it to the point where your eye is happy. 
Um, flashlight is a useful one. If I click on that, um, bring my cursor over here, you see it kind of sharpens up the edges. So it's like holding a flashlight over. So you can see the, um, the root canal going down there. You can see the periodontal ligament. Um, slightly fuzzy on this image because this is a skull, so it tends to desiccate a bit, but you get the idea. Um, this retained root here, you can see there's still what looks like a live nerve going through there. So if this was an actual case rather than a skull, you'd probably be needing to extract that. So we're on flashlight at the moment. Now, if I right click, I have some other options on my flashlight. So I could make it an extra large beam if I wanted to. Right click again, I could make it positive negative. Right click again, I can magnify, which does what it sounds like it does. Right click again, emboss. This one's quite useful. It sharpens up the edges for you. So again, if you're looking for a um, periodontal ligament that is in the process of resor you know, resorbing, then uh, sometimes this one helps you make that judgment call of whether you're going to go in and remove that root or not. Right click again, colorize. Perhaps a limited value in a veterinary practice. Human dentists use this sometimes. Um, and then finally right click again and off. So that's the flashlight disappeared. Measure is really just for uh, if you're going to be doing endo really more than anything else, root canal treatments. Uh, notes, obviously, if you want to put a note on, I could just click there and type anything I like here. Um, I'll just put another one there just to show you. These are obviously, you know, you wouldn't have an abscess there, but you get the idea. I'll just that saves me typing abscess. But when I put my cursor over that note, it will actually just show me what I've just typed there. Now that is from this icon here. If I go up to notes here in the menu, I can do things like delete those notes, I can hide the flags. So if I was talking to the owner, I could do that, and then later on, I could bring those flags back just by ticking and on ticking that box. As I say, I can go in and delete them. So I just Click on there and delete and it's gone, and there and delete and it's gone. I can save this image with the notes on if I want to, so I can do that. Uh, Skywriter is just a drawing tool, so I could say to the owner, that's your abscess there if there was one. And again, just right click erase to get rid of that. Rotate, it will rotate four times. If I have forgotten and not, uh, not selected the right box in the first place, I can rotate it so that it's right. Revealer, don't worry about that one, that's for a previous version of the sensor, it just put an extra filter over it. If I click on positive once and click on it again, it, you see it just turns it on and off the positive negative filter, and likewise with colorize on and off. Okay, so that's all the image enhancement options, they're all nice and conveniently there above the image on the zoomed view. Now if I want to go back to, if, I, if my eyes are good enough, I can just double click here. I can click around and just look around at my other images from here if I want to, and it will just jump around. If I click on close here, it will take me out of the zoom view and back to the, the series view here. So just a couple of things to show you here. You notice you've got different icons up here now. So say I wanted to look at both of these canines side by side. So I've taken all these images, but actually I just want to look at the two canines side by side. Now, as I click on the boxes, it highlights them in red, but only one at a time. So if I hold down control, I can now select two boxes and then I can click on tile images, horizontal, and it will put those two side by side for me. Sometimes useful if you want to see if there's um, something going on on both sides in an animal. There we are. Just uh, close that down when you're ready. Um, and also, if you happen to have um, forgotten and put the wrong image in the wrong box, so say that one, which is obviously in the right place, but say it should have been up there. Again, just hold down control and then you can swap them. Put it where it should have been. Swap them back if you want to. You can also right click, copy, right click, paste. OK, so it'd be there. Um, you can paste into a Word document as well if you wanted to, if you're writing letters. Um, if I right click now, I can detach that so it's gone. It hasn't actually deleted it, it's just detached it. Um, so we could always get them back if necessary. Um, you can't actually delete images from this software. You'd have to do something else, something a bit more convoluted if you wanted to properly delete images, because in human dental, they're not allowed to. So um, you know, have to be very careful about not deleting. So in this software, you can't actually delete images. Um, now, if you wanted to export these images, 
there's a couple of different ways of doing that. Say I wanted to just export this one, then I go X-ray image, export. I can call it whatever I like, so I might want to call it um, upper right incisor, uh, upper right uh, canine, so I upper right canine. I could save that on my desktop or anywhere else I wanted to. Okay, so I can just save that if I wanted to. And that's just saved as a JPEG. And then, of course, I can go to any email program and attach that as a JPEG if I wanted to do that. Or I can put it on a memory stick and then import it somewhere else. It's just a JPEG. Um, it captures originally in DICOM format, but you can export it as a JPEG for convenience. OK, the other way of doing it is if I click on mail here. Um, you can if you've got Outlook installed on your laptop or PC, you can send an email. It would have the name of the patient here, date of birth and um, examination date. Um, and you can either send it as a CDR zip, which is the original DICOM images. So if you were sending it between two different practices, for example, both of which had the CDR software, you could send it. And as it arrives in the inbox at the other practice, it once they click open, it will open within their own Schick software as if they'd taken the images themselves with no loss of image quality. So that's, that's good if, if you happen to have that ability. And you can choose either the one selected image or the entire examination. Or you can send it them as JPEGs or postcard, which means basically a postcard full of JPEGs. Um, but however you choose to do it, and you can either email it or if I click on file, it will generate an attachment. Um, so it's just say I'm going to put this on my desktop. I'm going to put a new folder called uh, test CDR. It. I'll just save that in there. Okay, so now if I go to my desktop and find that folder, um, where is that? That one, there we go. So you see all my JPEGs are in there and they're all labelled, if you notice, sort of lower left, lower right. So can't get confused in future. So that's quite convenient. Um, and that's the main things you'll need to do. Obviously, you can print if you really want to. But that's the main functions of the software. And obviously, you wouldn't normally have all these for your animal, but um, it's got the right date for the right uh, series. If you did mix and match, so say this animal came back another day, if you were to take an image there, it would have the same series date here but it would have the right date underneath. So it wouldn't say 21st of May, it would have the right date under it. Okay, hope that helps.